On November 30th, 2016, a new element joined the periodic table. And everyone's like, yeah, 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 let's call it Tennessee, because its discovery was made possible by a bunch of super smart people in Tennessee. Here, here, and here. Which begs the question, how do you discover a new element in the first place? Back in the day, people thought there were just three or four elements, like earth, air, and water. <laughs> I know, right? Then we realized that, no, they're in the earth, air, and water. And there are a lot of them. And so we went about discovering them, some of them on purpose, and some of them basically by accident. Then at some point, a Russian guy named Mendeleev organizes them into a convenient periodic chart that everyone likes and hangs in chemistry labs around the world. And we find some more until there aren't any more to find, at least not in nature. And that's when we got started on the super heavies. We make these bad boys by smashing a radioisotope whose nucleus has a certain number of protons and neutrons with a beam of another isotope whose nucleus has another certain number of protons and neutrons. If everything goes right, like after a few gazillion tries, a new super heavy element is born. Most of these guys are really unstable. You don't get a lot, and you don't get them for long, like maybe a second, like maybe not even. So this is a very complicated endeavor, this super heavy element making. What with the need for big tools like nuclear reactors and ginormous particle accelerators. Word on the street is berkelium's going to be the go-to isotope in order to make element 117, and it's not like it grows on trees. There's only one place on Earth that can produce and isolate the amount they need. Here. That's why this Russian scientist, Yuri Oganesian, gets introduced to scientists at Oak Ridge National Lab, courtesy of Vanderbilt University. Oak Ridge scientists are able to make a radioisotope called berkelium-249. After a year in the high-flux isotope reactor and three months of chemical purification at the Radio Chemical Engineering Development Center right next door, the isotope is flown across the Atlantic to the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Russia. There, the berkelium target is blasted for another five months with a calcium-48 beam. In a few instances, the atoms collide, the nuclei fuse, and element-117 is created for all of about a half-life 50 thousandths of a second. Researchers detect a whopping six atoms of this stuff and report their findings in April 2010. Yeah, nice job, everybody, but now you're going to have to do it all over again to be sure you really discovered a new element. So they repeat the experiment and report they see element 117 again in 2012. Another team in Germany confirms the discovery in 2014. Hey, yeah, we see it again. Yuri Oganesian, who led the endeavor, discovers other elements too, and even gets one named Oganesian. We also finish the seventh row of the periodic chart, and that's a really big deal because it gets us closer to here. Which begs the question, what's that? The Island of Stability is a theoretical place beyond the current periodic table, where new super heavy elements with magic numbers of protons and neutrons are increasingly stable and last longer than a millisecond like maybe hundreds or even millions of years. And that opens new doors to opportunities in physics and chemistry and makes things possible we haven't even thought of yet. And that, people, is why we discover new elements in the first place.